Have you ever been confused about which grids to use in your design? What are the standards for desktop, tablet, or phone? And do you really need to align everything on your canvas to the grid, or is there more freedom? In this video, we'll answer all these questions and dive deep into how grids work in Figma. Let's get started. Grids are such a powerful tool when it comes to keeping your design organized and aligned. They are like invisible guidelines that help structure your layout, making everything look neat and consistent. And in Figma, adding grids is super easy. All you have to do is select a frame, go to the layout grid section in the design panel, and click the plus button. By default, you'll get a 10 pixel square grid, but you can customize it to fit your project's needs. If you click on the layout grid setting icon, you can see in Figma there are three type of grids. The first is simply called grid, which gives you a uniform set of squares, great for general layouts. Then you have columns, which are ideal for horizontal alignment and are especially helpful for responsive web design. Finally, there are rows, which align elements vertically. For desktop frame, the most common setup is a 12-column grid. This is a standard because it's flexible. You can easily divide your layout into halves, thirds, or quarters. I always set the grid type to stretch so that the columns adapt to the frame size. And then I tweak the margin and gather. The margin is the empty space on the sides of your grid and the gutter is the space between the columns. For desktops, I like to set the gutter to 32 pixels and the margin to 160 pixels. That's a popular choice, the margins can vary depending on your design. When it's come to tablets, I reduce the number of columns to 8 because we are working with less space. I also adjust the margin down to 32 pixels and the gather to 16 pixels. This makes the design more compact but still visually clean. Now for the mobile design, I shrink the grid even further to 4 columns. Both the margins and the gutters here are set to 16 pixels. This is a good minimum to ensure enough breathing room around your content while still making the most of the limited screen space. I don't recommend going below 16 pixels for margins, even when things feel tight. Let's talk about vertical grids. You can add one by going back to the layout grid section, clicking the plus button again, and this time changing the type to rows. I like to start my rows from the top, and set the height to 8 pixels with a gutter of 8 pixels. This works perfectly if you are following an 8-point grid system, which ensures all your spacing is consistent. The nice thing about these rows is that they snap your elements to the nearest line, keeping everything perfectly aligned. And the best part, these grids are responsive. As long as you've set them to stretch, they'll adjust automatically when you resize the frame. This makes designing for multiple screen size so much easier. Now I want to address a common question, especially for junior designers. Should everything in your design align perfectly with the layout grid? The short answer is no. Not everything needs to align with the columns, and i show you what I mean. In this design, you'll notice there is an image, and part of it sits outside the column grid, and that's totally fine. Before we wrap up, let me give you a quick tip to make working with grids even easier. By default, Figma's notch amount is set to 10 pixels, 
but if you are using an 8 point grid system, you'll want to change this to 8 pixels. To do this, go to the main menu, hover over preferences, select nudge amount and set the big nudge from 10 to 8. Now when you move elements with the arrow keys while holding the shift button, they'll stay perfectly aligned with your grid. And that's it! Grids in Figma are a game changer. Once you understand how to set them up for different screen sizes and use them effectively, your designs will not only look organized but also adapt beautifully to any screen. Okay, thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. See you in the next video.